Hi, uh, my name is Tony and today I'm going to be going over how to use Track and True ELD. So the first thing you're going to want to do once you have the app downloaded is make sure you have the correct login name and password set up, the correct credentials, then you're just going to go ahead and hit login. And if this is your first time logging in, sometimes you may get some questions pertaining to your location and Bluetooth. Uh, just make sure that the Bluetooth is on and that location services for the app is always on. You will need this in order for it to work properly. Here we go. So once you're logged in, you are going to see the main page, the status page. This is where you will go for a majority of things that you will be doing on this app, including changing statuses, connecting to the truck, and checking how much hours you have on your limits. So the first and most important thing you will always need to do once you are near the truck is make sure that you are connected. In order to do this, you will need to go over to the top left corner where you see the red truck symbol and press on it. And um, if your device has already been paired to the truck, it should show up at the top in green. And you will just need to press on the green truck number, whichever truck you may have. And um, I'm just going to hold off on doing it for a second to show you guys the device list. Uh, sometimes you may be required to repair the device, which in this case the device number is ABD8. You can see this number by going to the back of the device and checking the MAC serial address. It should be the last four characters. So in this case, you will just press on the nearby device, ABD8, and find the correct truck number. In this case, it was 99, so it'll connect and pair all at the same time, get you set up. I'm just going to go ahead and press on 99. And as you see at the top, the truck symbol is now green, which means it is good to go. And now that you are connected, I can go a little bit more into showing you how to change statuses. So it's relatively easy. The same process is for all statuses. Whenever you need to change onto on duty, sleeper birth, driving, whatever it may be, you will just press on that status on this wheel. For example, I would like to do a pre-trip inspection right now. So I'm going to go ahead and press on on duty. The location, city and state will be automatic. And here it'll load up um, some more information for me regarding the comment, trailer number, and shipping number. So, for the comment, I can um, either type in pre-trip inspection, or I can go into this little box of comments here on the right, and you will see a number of commentaries that it will allow you to put in. So, just depending on what you're using the on-duty status for, you can put the comment in. In our situation, it is a pre-trip inspection, so I can just leave that in there. And you're also going to need to make sure that you have the correct shipping document number and trailer number set. So if you already have the trailer number connected and you would like to change it, you would just need to press on the pencil that is here on the right hand side where it says trailer number. It will load up this screen to where you can change or um, drop or hook new trailers. So it says 270 right now with the license. So I'm going to hit drop. And say I just want to put in a trailer number, for example, 250. I'll just type in 250 here uh, and hit hook. Once it is in there, you can see it shows 250 and I'm able to drop it again. So it's the same process for all trailers. If you know you need to drop another trailer, hook a different one, just hit drop, type it in, hit hook, and save. Uh, the same thing is for shipping document numbers. So in order to change the shipping document number, you will just press on that pencil on the right hand side and whatever it may be, you will type it in and hit add, save. And it will save these numbers in until you change them again. So you put them in once and it'll kind of carry on to the next events as well. So uh, just something to keep in mind whenever you do get unloaded and loaded you should be going into the shipping document number when you are changing statuses and either removing it or adding a new one. So that is that. And then once we have all the information that we need filled out for the status change, we will hit save. And now we are in the on duty status. So like I said, same exact thing for whatever status you're changing to. I'm going to off duty here, hit save, break check or something like that save it in and now we are back in the off-duty status so over at the bottom you're gonna see all of the different limits that you have your 11 hours of driving limit for the day the eight hour uh, 
eight hours of driving that you can have until you need to take a 30 minute rest break, 14 hour window limit in which you are able to use your 11 hours of driving and your 70 hour duty cycle. So pretty straightforward and simple. If you ever need to check how much time you have on your limits, you just go to this page and look at the clocks on the bottom. And uh, next up we have the log page and this is over at the bottom if you kind of see we got a few different tabs there's the main status page we got the log page here um, here this is just for you to kind of see your logbook in a graph format and um, go into a little more detail on your events if needed um, and you're able to flip through the days here in case you need to check out a different day i believe it goes to eight days back and also a good thing to keep in mind here is you are able to use the edit tool for certain non-driving events so for example if um, this pre-trip somehow um, there was a mistake on it and i needed to you know make the on-duty status a little bit longer i can go to the right hand side and hit on the pencil just make sure i'm keeping the same status as on duty and i could actually change the start time of the event so instead of like 312 like it was shown there I can make it so that it starts at 1 p.m. so that'll just make the length of the on-duty time there a little bit longer helps in some scenarios I don't think many people will use this too often but it's just something good to keep in mind and aside from that this page is just more to like kind of look at for you uh, going on to the next tab at the bottom it is the DOT inspection tab and this is where you will go to certify your records at the end of each day. And in case you have a DOT inspection, uh, you will be able to show the DOT officer your logbooks from here. So starting off with certifying your days, in order to certify, you just need to make sure you have the correct day set. Over at the top, you can flip through the different days. As you can see here on October 12th, it shows that I have zero records that need to be certified. So this day is all good flip back to the 13th there are 10 records that need to be certified so um, again this is something that you would usually do at the end of the night though uh, just because you're just going to keep certifying your records you know throughout the day best to do it later on and just hit certify records and you're going to hit agree and that will set a certification in the unidentified records are something that you should not really go into um, it doesn't really affect the logbook that much. It's just a list of events that the truck may uh, may feel that you did. For example, if you turn the truck on or off while you're not connected to the device, those types of events will go into the logbook, into the unidentified records. But overall, not really something that's uh, needed to be worried about. If you ever have any real issues, please be sure to contact your motor carrier. So. Uh, next up, in case of a DOT inspection tab, sometimes officers may just ask to look at your logbook and um, you can hand them the phone most of the time and you know they'll just go over this page right here. They can flip through and see all of your events in more detail. Uh, but if they are requesting specifically to transfer the logbook events to you, to them rather, then uh, you will need to go and hit on this tab where it says start inspection. So once you hit start inspection, It'll load up the same thing saying transfer data to police. Press on that and from here you will give the phone or device to the DOT officer and he will be able to select to where he needs to transfer the logbook to. So he'll be selecting whether you know he needs to send it to their web services, to the FMC's, FMCSA email or to his personal email. And again that's something that the DOT officer should be able to uh, already type in on his own. And uh, at the bottom you will go ahead and see that we have two PDF, uh, two PDF certificates. So the first one is the compliance card, which just uh, shows that this logbook is certified and good to use. And the next one that you press on will just be an instructions uh, sheet. So you should have all of these papers in your truck binder already, but in case you do not have them and the DOT officer is asking for them, this is where you would go. So, um, relatively simple and straightforward to use. Um, one thing that is good to do whenever you are doing your pre-trips, um, over in the top left, you will see a tab with three lines. That is kind of like the menu. It'll open up the menu for you. 
and uh, you can go into the DVIR tab. It is the second tab from the top. And this is pretty much for inspect pre-trip inspections. Um, whenever you're doing a pre-trip inspection, it is always good to add an inspection report. You will go ahead and just hit add inspection and you're going to want to double check the date and time at the top. Make sure it is setting the correct date and time because sometimes it may show a previous date. Uh, the location will be automatic. The truck number should be there automatically. I believe it is. Trailer number as well. And then here you can go into add and remove defects and you can just select on the truck or trailer whichever one you would like to mark off. If there's something wrong with the truck or trailer, you will mark it off here. For example, the um, uh, you see some airlines that might be leaking, just hit that. Uh, any remarks that you may have, comments regarding it, you can add into here. And you're going to mark that this vehicle is safe to drive, if it is, and then hit the certification down at the bottom and hit save. Confirm. And also, it'll if you're adding it to the current time, it'll also put you onto the on-duty status, like a pre-trip inspection. So you can do that right there. And as far as the logbook goes, that is pretty much it. It is straightforward and simple. If you ever any have any questions or issues, please be sure to contact your motor carrier and uh, relay any issues over to them.